April 5th, we're okay with yeah. that, you know? So, <laughs> but God's, God's plan always uh, uh, works out best. And, and, and one verse two, December 5th would have been great, but one verse two, April 5th, uh, a whole lot more at stake and right. men being undefeated. And a lot of people, uh, you saw the TV ratings were off the charts for it. And, uh, I know our guys were excited to play and they had such a great year and so much respect for their program, but obviously our, our guys deserve that night. Okay. And then the second thing is three week break in February, the COVID break, uh, it was tough coming back from that, but then in the long run, didn't it help your legs and help your stamina down the stretch? Yeah, d definitely. When you came back and played all those games, games in a short period of time just showed the the players toughness and willingness to uh, compete and gut through because they weren't they weren't 100 percent the 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 team wasn't playing at our best but we found a way to win a big 12 championship and that's something that uh, uh, again first one in school's history meant, meant so much to our team uh, and then after that uh, again a losing in the conference tournament, God working out where we needed practice days because our defense had really slipped off. And uh, contrary uh, opinions, I mean, you do need to practice to get better. Right. Players are out to just play games. But uh, that practice really helped us get back to being the team that we were. And then it showed in the tournament as we continued to uh, return to form. And uh, our defense had gone from top three to in the 40s mm. uh, analytically. And then we were able to get it back trending in the right direction. Amazing. That's great. All right, let's take a break. Uh, more with Coach Scott Drew when we come back. Big 12 named its all Big 12 uh, preseason team today. There's some Baylor beers on that. We'll talk about that when we come back. You're tuned in to the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. And we'll be right back after this. Back with us live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. Thanks to our uh, host here at Rudy's, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Nick Rodriguez is back there. Nick, wave a hand. Let's give him a hand. Thank you very much to uh, Nick and the crew here at Rudy's. Continuing with Baylor men's basketball coach Scott Drew. Coach, we got some questions from the audience. You ready for that? Uh, the easy ones. Okay. <laughs> These are our good questions. It's uh -huh. our First Place Foods Ask the Coach. First place foods, that's a darn good pickle. Uh, Roy Evans is right over there. See, Roy? Roy says, uh, with all the returning guys, who would you say is going to make the biggest step up this year? 
Well, every great question, and every year we want all the returning players to improve. Every year our coaching staff hopefully gets better. I mean, you're either getting worse or better, and better is better than the alternative. So <laughs> hopefully everybody's gotten better. I would say uh, you look at uh, LJ Cryer last year was somebody that played early on, didn't play as much later. But that freshman to sophomore year, sometimes you can take that jump. And uh, going into the summer before he got injured, uh, he he was definitely playing well. Had really uh, gotten some ex uh, confidence and really had learned from competing each and every day with Davion, Maceo, and Jared. So uh, hopefully he can take that uh, uh, step forward from that freshman to sophomore year. But all across the board, the guys improve and get better because they work too hard not to. And there were no signs of any of your guys kind of sitting back, enjoying the moment. I mean, it seems like they really got back into the gym and got back working really quickly. Well, the good thing is we got guys that love to be in the gym. They like to improve, get better. But oh, the guys that returned, a lot of them, uh, they saw the success of the guys graduating or that left early and – now they have a chance to fill some of those roles, so they're excited about that opportunity too. Good. Along those lines, uh, Roy, good question. Thank you. But along those lines, Big 12 name, they're all preseason team today. Matt Meyer is first team yeah. uh, all Big 12 in the preseason. That's a nice honor. That's great. Great yeah. honor for him. And Kendall Brown is a uh, uh, newcomer or freshman of the freshman, year preseason. Right. And we call those team awards because at the end of the year, if anyone it receives those accolades and going into this year, if you don't have success – uh, you're not getting those awards. So hopefully we have a lot of people. You look two years ago, what, what Tristan, the year that he got injured, he was the only one in the preseason that had any accolades. Yeah. Following the season, we had six players get recognized. Wow. So, again, those are those are team awards. Hopefully we have a lot of them at the end of the year because that's when it matters. Very nice. Very good. All right, great recognition there. Here's another uh, question. First Place Foods asks the coach. This is from Steve Van Wagner. Steve is right there. Steve says, uh, Steve, uh, I was looking at your cap there. I thought that was a national championship cap. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is right there. I love it. Uh, Steve says, have you followed Brady Heslip's career? Yeah, Brady had a tremendous career. Uh, uh, played a long time, and then and it actually uh, uh, surprising, he decided to turn it, uh, uh, turn in his shoes a little bit early because he wanted to get into the business world. He went to one of the best business schools in Canada, uh, graduated from there, and now he's an entrepreneur, and he's going to be really successful in whatever he does. But he chose to 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 end playing probably uh, four or five years. He could have kept going four or five years more, but he wanted to get into this business school and start his business uh, career because uh, his dad was a great businessman, and uh, I think he wanted to uh, uh, follow in those footsteps a little bit. But he's doing great. You mentioned after we won it, who like – from hearing from those guys, mm -hmm. past players that contribute and help make it possible, but hearing and seeing their excitement and joy, that, that, that's what was so exciting. Oh, that was great. Yeah. Along those lines, uh, how about the guys who, who just left, moving on up to the next level? Man, they really had great summers in the NBA Summer League, and how are they going? Yeah, now? that was really neat this summer. We were able to go up and watch Mark Vidal, Macy Oteague. Uh, Jared was coaching in the summer. Davion <laughs> was co uh, Summer League Player of the Year, but – uh, spending time with them, and now Mark, you know, is with the Kansas City Chiefs, and hopefully he'll be uh, hooking up with Patrick Mahomes in the future as a tight end. <laughs> uh, and then, and then uh, Maceo and Jared with the Jazz, we were able to take the team up, watch the Mavs Jazz play, and in the first half it was Royce and Jared Butler leading the Jazz in scoring, and Jared finished with uh, 22 and led them in scoring. Maceo played well, so it was great seeing them. And then Davion uh, just the other night led uh, Sacramento Sacramento in scoring, and uh, I know those guys are going to have a, a, a great career. Um, but at the same time, uh, just hearing people from the Kings organization and the Jazz organization brag about high character, work ethic, and all the intangibles they bring, uh, that, that really makes you a, a, a proud bear. Boy, that's fun to watch. We've always liked the Utah Jazz with Dennis Lindsay yes, out there yes. and the connections there. Now add the Sacramento Kings. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch them with – with uh, Davion out there. Um, what is it with you coaching uh, tight ends, NFL tight ends? How, how does that continue to well, happen? Well, one, one of the neatest moments in practice was when uh, Oakland Raiders scout walked in, and, <laughs> and you're like, we've arrived when we not only have NBA scouts, but NFL scouts at practice. <laughs> That's great. He said, you know, I'm not going to make the mistake of not stopping in because <laughs> you've had one, you've had three. So, uh, anyway, he looked at everyday John, and John's like, nah. <laughs> Sticking with basketball. Yeah. That is great. You have arrived. You got NFL yeah. scouts. 
about showing up at your practice. All right, let's take a break. Back with more in a moment. You're tuned in to the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's. Baylor men's basketball coach Scott Drew, our first guest of the evening. We'll take a break and be right back. Back with us on the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. I want to give you our Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics health tip for the week. Staying home is one of the best ways to stay well and reduce the spread of COVID-19. Avoid contact with others, limit unnecessary trips, and have groceries delivered. But come to Rudy's whenever you have the chance. Find more tips at bswhealth.com slash COVID-19. And back with Baylor men's basketball coach Scott Drew for one more segment. Uh, Dave Aranda comes uh, at the bottom of the hour this evening. Uh, we mentioned practice. Uh, tell everybody about the newcomers, James Akinjo, uh, Dale Bonner, some newcomers, freshmen that are here. Uh, tell us about them and how they're, they're acclimating. Well, starting with James, since you mentioned him, he, he's somebody that uh, was at Georgetown and was the Big East freshman of the year. Then he went to Arizona and was first team all Pac-12. So he's somebody that's experienced his fourth year in college, uh, really efficient player, but what we like most about him is incredible work ethic, really fits our culture, really blended in well, and uh, I know you guys are going to be excited to watch him and cheer for him. Dale Bonner is somebody that played at Fairmont State, and just like we've had Freddie Gillespie go from a non-Division one to the Toronto Raptors. Hopefully, Dale will do the same. Nice. He's adjusting the physicality, and 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 he'll he'll develop uh, uh, over time in the weight room. But a uh, uh, real hard worker, and he can shoot it, and I think uh, uh, brings an athletic uh, um, uh, speed that you can't teach. So those those guys are are great additions. And then the three freshmen that were really blessed because. All three are top 50 recruits. They're all uh, um, come from programs well coached. You look at uh, Langston Love played in the national championship Geico tournament against uh, Kendall. Yeah. Uh, so it was Mount Verde versus Sunrise, and yeah. they guarded each other, and Mount <laughs> Verde won. So Langston has bragging rights over Kendall, but uh, uh, they all – and then Jeremy Sohan played at uh, another prep school powerhouse, and then last – Lalamere, and then last year was – overseas with the COVID state over over there and those three live together they do everything together they uh, um, humble hardworking even though they're they're four star five star guys you wouldn't know it by how hard they work and 
just uh, uh, how coachable and how much they want to get better and no entitlement at all. So they're really fitting in well. Uh, really like the group uh, overall. But the Big 12, I mean, you look at the different polls and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the polls have three of us in the top ten. So wow. it, it'll be another year where the Big 12 Conference hopefully gets seven teams in the NCAA tournament. And uh, in, in day and age with COVID, you have more experienced teams than ever. Uh, I think Kansas has five uh, super seniors and two seniors. So they're older than most G League teams. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, how about your schedule? What are some of the highlights of your schedule? So each year we try to play a, a challenging non-conference schedule. We have Stanford at home. We have Villanova at home. Uh, we're on the road at Oregon. Battle for Atlantis. If there anyone's looking for something to do over Thanksgiving, I mean, the Bahamas, Atlantis. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get much better than Sign that. Sign you up, right? And, 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 and great, great competition down there. So uh, a lot of teams ranked in the top 25. So that'll be great for us. And then, obviously, the Big 12. Yeah. And then we go on the road to Alabama, uh, go on the road to Oregon. Season opener is November 12th. Uh, we talked about this earlier today, but going to see a banner drop on November 12th and yeah. maybe some other things happen. Yeah, so, so great, great weekend. We got to November 12th. Uh, the players get their rings. We drop the banner. That's something that everybody uh, is helped achieve together. So hopefully you're there to support it. We got the football game the next day. So a great weekend for uh, Baylor Athletics. Sweet. That's Oklahoma in football on the yes. 13th. Uh, the football game this past Saturday, the halftime show was very entertaining. Yeah. Uh, the Golden Wave yeah. Band did a tremendous job. Uh, they're, they're really talented, maybe the most talented team on campus. <laughs> <laughs> they did a great job. Yeah. That was a nice tribute to, yeah. to you and to the uh, basketball team and your success. And we thanked them on a little video, something we put together today, not nearly as uh, high-tech and coordinated as them, <laughs> but uh, 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 Ty Beard, your son-in-law, helped put that together. Way so to go, Ty. Be, be proud of him. Good uh, job. Good job, Ty. Way to go. Um, the four new schools that have been added to the Big yeah. 12 coming in the future. What, I mean, that just really elevates, it seems like, the, the status of the Big 12 in basketball. Yeah, well, if you look at the analytics, and coaches all nowadays look at the analytics, since 2014 the Big 12 has been by far and away the best conference in the country. They've analytically taken out Texas and Oklahoma, added the four new schools, and we'd still be the best conference. Wow. So uh, it, nothing's going to change. Uh, Cincinnati's uh, had a long tradition basketball-wise. BYU, you've been up there. Uh, Tremendous fan support, and again, when you join the Big 12, it's going to do nothing but elevate your program. Houston, we were just in the Final Four with them. Coach Sampson's been an unbelievable coach everywhere he's been. And then uh, um, Central Florida's a, a program that has a ton of resources, uh, great head coach, and they'll get nothing but better. So exciting times in the Big 12. Remember that game we played in, in, in Provo? Oh, yeah. A few years sure, ago? Sure do. Went Boy, down to good. the wire. Oh. Place was rocking. Yeah. 20-plus, uh -huh. uh, 20,000 20, at yeah. the Marriott Center. Yeah, they, they really turn out and support their teams. And uh, hopefully uh, this weekend in football, it's not that close. Yeah. Hopefully we just take care of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Preview uh, of uh, BYU and the Big 12 this weekend at McLean Stadium. That, that'll be really, really fun. How about, uh, I think we've talked uh, about a lot of your players coming back. Adam Flagler, I haven't really mentioned him. Does he have a chance to really flourish now yeah. or step up and get more minutes? Well, Adam was somebody that was leading us in points going into when he had, a, uh, because of COVID protocols, missed some time in December. And uh, he was somebody, last year we said we had a starting rotation, and obviously he was a part of that. Uh, but uh, Adam is such a diligent young man, such a, a high character. I mean, he wants to be a pediatrician one day, and, and uh, everybody from uh, 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 the GAs, managers, coaches, players, they all tr really respect him. And he's going to have a great year this year. Uh, knock on wood, he stays injury-free. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, we talked earlier uh, with uh, Charlie Melton earlier today. How about those guys behind the scenes, like Charlie and Dave <laughs> Snyder and going through the COVID year and how important yeah. they were? Well, it, it, if School administration, Kenny Boyd, everybody, uh, uh, if they didn't put out the resources and make it possible to even play and compete. Uh, so hats off to them. But, uh, again, coaches are only as good as their players and staff. And uh, Charlie's the best strength coach in the country, and Dave Snyder's phenomenal.
Very good. They were uh, huge, huge contributors to the uh, success that you had this year. Uh, final thoughts here as, as we get to the start of the season, November 12th. Should have 100% capacity in the Farrell Center. We never were able to do that last year. How great is that going to be? Well, it, it, it start. you look at the football environments and just how the fans have been so excited to return to college football. And uh, there's a reason there's upsets every week because the, the, the home fans make such a big difference. And I say this all the time. You can watch a game or you can affect it. And if you really – want to help your home team uh, that that helps that helps our players when there's when there's a loud boisterous crowd it hurts the opponents with their communication and officials are human so as long as they're human they're going to be affected by a crowd so uh, it, it's what it takes a team to win and we have we have some of the best fans in the nation can't thank them enough for their support good thanks for verifying that officials are human yeah. I appreciate that that's good sometimes we got to check yeah that is good well can't thank you enough for being here tonight really appreciate it and uh congratulations again and let's do it again how about that let's well, do it again i, I this love year. that but you can't let me just leave right now i gotta i gotta introduce the best coach in the country all right the coach of the year where's coach aranda right in here, the house right let's here. go baby <laughs> so happy for their success and how they've done nice transition very good <laughs> coach scott drew coach of the men's basketball team here at baylor the national champions and Coach Aranda will join us following a break. Stay with us. You're watching your Tuned In to the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's, and we'll be right back after this. Back with us on the Baylor Coaches Show tonight, live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. Thanks to Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Let's we'll switch gears here and bring in Baylor football coach Dave Aranda with us. Coach, welcome. We appreciate you being here. Oh, it's good to be here. Yeah, very good. Thanks very much. Congratulations on the win over West Virginia. I, I think the word that I used was a very thorough victory over the Mountaineers on Saturday. You know, that really started on um, – just Saturday night, the flight back from the you know uh, Oklahoma State, and just the 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 coaches and their introspection and their accountability, and then on Monday with our players and um, their energy and their mindset and wanting to get better, and you know that practice on Monday was really good, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and you know th the the standard was was met throughout the week, and so you just felt. There's an energy when it's like that. You love being a part of a team when you just feel like everyone's pushing each other 
everyone is being held to a really high standard and you don't want to let anybody down and you just feel you walk in a room you get you get you get uh eye contact with everybody and you just feel it like they got you we got you here we go and so we we have that feeling right now and so it's been that way since then so i'm excited that's what you want to see isn't it as a coach to see your team you know be disappointed in the loss but not dwell on it look ahead what can you what do you need to do to correct those mistakes and and make up for it the next week yeah, you know, I think, you know, for just the – really it was our first away game. It was our first um, kind of hostile environment. A lot of things you could have done better. A lot of things I could have done better. And so I think for as much as we want to hold our players and our people accountable, you know, as coaches it really needs to start with us. And so we have to be that way. We have to, to uh, be real uh, transparent about this is what I did good, this is what I didn't do good. This is what I thought. This is the mistake I made. This is what I learned. And so, um, you know, our, our guys were able to do that. And I think um, a lot of them have grown into that. I think some of them have come in, have have uh, come to us kind of being that way. I think others have, uh, have grown into that way. But it's something that our players expect, you know, because we, we hold them uh, accountable that way. So it's a good it's a good feeling right now. I'm, I'm excited. You know, it's a big challenge. We have played, uh, you know, our opponent here coming up, BYU, quite a bit. And so a lot of respect for them. Yeah, talk about that. You, you've seen BYU pretty much everywhere you've been, haven't yeah, you? <laughs> yeah. So at Hawaii, we played them. It was the last game. I was at, I was, um, at the University of Hawaii for four years. So the, my last game, I was a defense coordinator there. We played uh, BYU, and we got beat pretty bad. And we um, – all lost our jobs right after that. <laughs> and so, Not a good memory. Yeah, <laughs> and so from there I went to Utah State, and um, we played BYU there and lost again. I think that game was like 6-3 to three or 6-9, to nine, really? something like that. And then um, from there I went to Wisconsin, and we played BYU again. And uh, Taysom Hill was the quarterback then. He was also the quarterback uh, when we played at Utah State, and uh, we won that game. And then we played them at uh, LSU. And so then this is, you know, yet again. You know, funny story, though, when I was at Wisconsin, um, so there's a fair amount of that staff that, that is, you know, Utah um, Utah football is pretty um, – it's recycled. A lot of the coaches <laughs> will be within certain schools and kind of just go around the schools, okay. and there is a strong culture there. And so uh, our head coach at Wisconsin was Gary Anderson, and he had been at Utah and – was at Utah State, and we had some various coaches that were they were Utah people, and so we were leading BYU. I think it was in the third quarter, and uh, Gary came up to me. Gary's very cool customer, very calm, and he came up to me and he grabbed me right above my elbow, and he looked me in the eye and he goes, "Don't you effing, don't you eff this up," <laughs> you know? And he looked, and, and I, I'd never seen him like that, you know. And so I was kind of shook by it, but I think he was very, um, you know, this was. He had a chance to win versus BYU, and he had seen all the comebacks, all the crazy games, all the wild finishes, and he just didn't want – he wanted to close it out. And so I think – I told our team that story just because I think the – you know, uh, BYU is that type of team. It's a gritty team. It's a tough team. They find ways to win. You know, they're going to be a great addition to our conference, uh, but it's someone that we greatly respect, and we're looking for uh, – it's going to be a fight come Saturday. How about the side story or one of the uh, side stories going in? Jeff Grimes, uh, your offensive coordinator, came from BYU three years there. Eric Mateos, your offensive line coach, came from BYU. And Matt Mitchell is on your staff. He came from there as well. Yeah, so they, you know, they bring some good insight, uh, I think, in terms of personalities and culture and, and um, how people respond to, um, you know, hardships and failure and success and all of it. So there's – there's good kind of connect the dots type stuff there, which I, you know, I appreciate. I think, um, you know, it reminds me of when I personally for me, when I left Wisconsin to go to LSU, um, our first game at LSU was versus Wisconsin. It was in Lambeau Field. And so I remember coming out of the, the tunnel and all the Wisconsin players were there in their pregame stretch. And then I just remember they all stopped stretching and looked at me <laughs> and, like, waved. And it was like a dream. And I'm walking by and I'm waving back at them. I, f I feel like I should go shake their hand, but I'm not supposed to. So it's funny. You know? And so I just feel like I remember in the lead up to that game, I just remember the questions on t to me. And I just remember feeling, man, I, I want to help the team that I'm on. And it's important, but there's still, I mean, 
you know, there's still um, – so I, in treating both Jeff and Matt and Eric just with respect and, you know, kind of giving them the ability to say what they need to say. Because, you know, the, the bottom line is we've played um, however many opponents so far and haven't had coaches that were on the staff, you know, previous – um, and um, have been able to figure stuff out, and so, you know, what they've been able to share has been has been appreciated. But, uh, you know, I, they're looking to to get a win uh, for sure. It is, I mean, the way you guys scout and look at so much tape is is it a plus? Is it a, a plus factor for you to have those guys here, or are we making too much out of that? Well, no, I think it is. I think on their side, you know, they're going to be concerned with signals. They're going to be concerned with language. Um, so they're going to have to change some. I think when we came, when they came to us, they changed some of their language on the way. So there's some language that's at the line of scrimmage that we do have to change, but not as much as what they possibly may have to. Um, and then I think, you know, um, I think the just the personality standpoint of, how how they handle um, success or how they handle pressure, I think those things kind of play. You know, the person drives the coach or the player, and so you know the insight into that I think is is valuable. Now, a lot of that, I mean, I have a fair um, knowledge of a lot of the guys uh, as well, so it kind of complements that. But really, the bottom line is once it's kicked off then none of it really matters. Right, right, <laughs> exactly. That's true. All right, let's take a break. Uh, when we come back, I want to ask you about BYU coming into the Big 12 in a couple of years and what they look like. Are they Big 12 ready? What this year's team looks like? We'll talk about that when we come back. Baylor and BYU play Saturday afternoon, 2.30 at McLean Stadium. More with Coach Dave Aranda on the Baylor Coaches Show when we come back. Stay with us. The Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's. Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Welcome back on the Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue with Coach Dave Aranda. Coach, how about our Academy Sports and Outdoors uh, Ask the Coach question of the week? Here it is. Hey, Coach, what is your biggest goal for the rest of the season? It is to um, to own the standard. You know, the, So the standard for us would be the best that we've done. And so for each player, each coach to – to be the standard, uh, you know, every day, day by day. And, and I think just that um, has uh, transpired really since, you know, uh, uh, last Monday. And so to continue on that path and to for guys to push and to grow, you know, I think there is something to be said to, you know, it's, it's easier to do that after a loss. 
you know, when, when, when there's the sting of it and just the feeling of all that and not wanting to feel that again, you know, it's tougher to do that off of a win, you know. And so I think to get it outside of um, – to get it to where it's not coming from outcomes, but it's coming from intrinsically and it's coming from connection to your team, I think that is, um, that is where we're at right now, and that's, that's the goal, to keep pushing our guys to be their best, you know, every day. Very good. That's our Academy Sports and Outdoors uh, question. Ask the coach. Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the Big 12 Conference. Talking about uh, Brigham Young, they'll be a member of the Big 12 coming up in a couple of years, and uh, we'll see them this year in Waco. We'll see them next year in Provo. Kind of a preview of coming attractions. Are they, as you look at their team this year and their program, are they Big 12 ready? Are they going to fit in well? They are. You know, they've got a great culture. Um, there is a great lineage with BYU. And so there's a fair amount of the players that are playing for them now. Their dads and grandfathers all played at BYU. A lot of family members have played at BYU. And so I think there is a, um, uh, there is a really strong why behind what they're doing. Um, I think, you know, there is some strong maturity, right? So a lot of them, uh, you know, obviously Mormons, they go on missions. So the mission may be out for two years and they come on back and then to get back in playing shape, it's another two years. And so you're talking 24, 25 years old. And so there's, um, there's you know, there are men that you're playing against and, and um, the line of scrimmage, that makes quite a difference. And then I think just the, the coaching, you know, there's been great head coaches throughout, um, whether it's uh, Lavelle Edwards or a lot of respect for Bronco Mendenhall and now Kalani, um, you know, he's just one of the nicest people you've ever met. Just, man, strong character, great heart. You know, Klein's one of those people you really want to see be successful outside of uh, this Saturday coming up. And so, you know, um, they're, they've got great leadership. And so I think those things kind of propelling them. Uh, into our conference is a really good thing. That's great. And you know uh, Coach Sataki and, and several of their staff members, you know them really well, don't you? Yeah, you know, Ed Lamb is um, – he's been an assistant head coach there. He's a DB coach there. So Ed was re was part of recruiting me when I was at Redlands High School. Huh. And so Ed was a University of Redlands, uh, which is a Division three private school. And so I went – end up going to Cal Lutheran University – which is down the freeway a bit, and it's kind of the rival of University of Redlands. Uh, but I remember, you know, all those phone conversations on uh, with Ed, and then, um, you know, when I was coaching, I ended up coaching at Calu, and really quick, I think the very, you know, within a couple months of being there, and then I remember Ed uh, opening his his apartment for me to come by and visit, and you know, we we promised not to tell the Redlands and Kalu <laughs> because of the rivalry, I guess, yeah. looking back at it now. But, you know, we got on the board, and, and I learned a lot of ball from him. The, the, a lot of the coverage alignments and adjustments that I still believe now I learned from him. And so it's, um, you know, outside of my family, man, uh, football coaches, you can't beat them. Just wow. the, the people they are and the hearts they got and everything. And so Ed's one of those guys. Very cool. That's great. How about some questions from our audience? All right. Got this it. is First Place Foods Ask the Coach. First Place Foods, that's a darn good pickle. Uh, from Roy Evans. Roy is right over there in the middle. How much, uh, how nice was it to have Terrell Bernard back? Yeah, it was huge. I think what Terrell gives – is a really strong confidence and a really strong uh, calm. You know, I think when Terrell's in there, you know, there is an intensity about him. And so when he's in the locker room getting ready, you know, um, you just feel like um, you, you feel like you have a leader in there. You feel like, like if there's people that are anxious, they can go th just looking at Terrell, calms them down. And then I think on the field, you know, like today's a great example. We in practice today, call, uh, Terrell is calling out the formation, calling out the play, and it, and it is that play. They end up running that play, right? <laughs> or the next play, he's going to call out, here comes this motion. Hey, look for the stretch, and they run the stretch. And so just things like that, I think, um, you know, you think of all the work that Terrell has put to get to that, right? And so there's dudes that can do that when they're in the film room and their feet are kicked up on the desk and they're just, you know, they've got the clicker and they're rolling. It's another thing to do that in the heat of the moment yeah. when there's pressure, right, when stuff's moving fast. Trail moves. He can see it slow. And so it's a, it's a great asset to us. 
That's good. Good question. Thank you, Roy. Here's a question from Tommy, who is right here. Tommy says, uh, how does our defensive front match up with the BYU offensive interior? It's a really good question. Um, you know, I would, I would, I would say um, that might be the biggest question. I think, you know, prior to the West Virginia game, I think it, you know, front-wise, D-line-wise, pretty, in, pretty inconsistent, pretty, um, you know, um, um, good and bad, you know, not, um, not really where we'd want it to be. And I think West Virginia, um, the D-line played outstanding, I thought, and really fought and really bought into technique and stayed within it consistently. And I think the ability to play the run helped set up the pass rush that eventually came with the however many sacks we had, you know. And so I think for us uh, that are older, um, for myself anyways, that's how I would see the game. I think sometimes some of our young people just want to rush the passer right off the bus, you know. And so you've got to be able to stop the run first to rush the passer. And so I think uh, that was a good um, – um, um, that was a um, – uh, good grounding and in, in that type of theory, but I think for us to do it now versus BYU and their line and their center and their tackles and both tackle, both tackles are six seven three three whatever, and so it it you know that's another thing, and so I think our guys are up for the challenge. I think this game gets us to the the place where we need to be at the end of the year so that we can do the stuff we need to do. I think this is a big stepping stone in that in the D-line process. I'm excited to see it. Very good, Tommy. Great question there. All right, final question uh, on our first place foods. Ask the coach question. Young Mason right here has a question for you. All right, and he says, "How tall is Gary Bohannon?" Oh wow, you got me on that one. I don't even know. He's taller than me, so he's. Let me see. I want to say maybe six two, maybe. You know. Um, I, I, let me say this with Gary. So, like, Gary had uh, one of his better practices today, and Gary is is leading from the front, right? Gary is, um, you know, we've got – we have a walk-on player uh, make a great catch, and Gary is running 20 yards to where he's at and congratulating him, Jonah Burton, and putting his arm around him, and they're running back into the huddle, and then Gary's going to take the next snap. I mean, just to see that, to see your leader do that, right, and to see um, him know everyone's name, right, and him care about everybody enough to work, right, for them, right. It doesn't feel like um, guys are working for Gary. Gary's serving them, and I think that just makes your team way strong. Nice. Very good. Mason, good question. Mason's got his Baylor jersey yes, on tonight, and he, is. he nice. is ready to go. Appreciate that. We need to take a break. We'll be back with more with Coach Dave Aranda right after this on the Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's.
Back on our Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's with Baylor football coach Dave Aranda. Baylor and BYU comes up Saturday afternoon, 2.30 at McLean Stadium. This is uh, this is homecoming a week on the Baylor campus. And last year, I know you got a, probably got a sense of it, but, uh, you know, it was probably muted a little bit last year with COVID uh, protocols. But, but homecoming is a big deal at Baylor. And uh, of course, you've got one. You've got one job to do, and everything else will take care of itself. But have you? Do you have a sense of how big homecoming is? I've heard a lot about it. You know, I, last year I, I know when I was able to speak to um, a lot of the students, they had mentioned how this isn't normally what it's like, and they 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 talked about just all of the events and just everything that they're missing, and it just seemed to um, kind of coincide with everything else that was happening at that time. You know, and so it was just really looking forward to this year. And, and you know, I remember in the hiring process just, just doing homework just on my own back with my family about about Baylor and homecoming comes right off the bat and everything. But I think it just gives I'm, – I'm excited to be a part of it because it gives me a chance to connect with just the students. You know, we football-wise, we do a fair amount of um, class checking. So, like, I'll get on um, a, uh, a little golf cart and we'll go around. I'll, I'll check classes for our – our players, you know, a fair amount of them are getting are getting, cla- are getting class checked by academics, but then I go throughout and check the ones that are not being checked by a- the academic staff just to make sure they're in class. And so in that process, I, I get to uh, connect with um, the students and uh, faculty and stuff, so I really enjoy that. But this would be so much bigger, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Good. It's, it's a week full of activities and great activities, and we're really one of the great traditions here at Baylor is homecoming week. Uh, and by Saturday, by kickoff Saturday, uh, front is coming through. It's supposed to be 72 for the high, mm. 50s uh, for the low on Saturday morning. Finally, a little football weather. Feels like football, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. I know. I'm really looking forward to uh, a packed house. Just the, you know, I think that's something for – just BYU coming in just to see how the state of Texas does it, how Baylor does it, right, what the Big 12's about. I think it'd be, it'd be great to show them. Yeah, very good. And uh, I think it will be. I, I think it'll be uh, packed or close to it, you know, with all the folks coming in for homecoming. So that'll be a real plus. Fired up for it. Yeah. Robert Griffin's going to be here That's again. Right. He's doing TV on Saturday. So homecoming for Rob coming back. So. <laughs> That'll be fun to have him back in town as well. Yeah, he's a great guy. You know, I think last time we talked prior to uh, that Oklahoma State game, man, I was just so excited for him. And you could just see just bubbling with energy and I think you're just uh, bubbling with, with just pride. And so that makes me feel good. And so I'm, I'm excited he's, we've, we've got another chance to be together for this one. Coach, good luck. You're looking forward to it. Baylor and BYU, Saturday afternoon. Coach, thanks for being here. Appreciate you. Thank All you. Right. Coach Dave Aranda on the Baylor Coaches Show tonight. It is the Bears and the Cougars, Saturday afternoon, 2.30 Central Time from McLean Stadium. Take a break. Be back and wrap things up in just a moment on tonight's Baylor Coaches Show.
And back to wrap things up on tonight's Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's. We really appreciate uh, Coach Scott Drew and Coach Dave Aranda being here as our guests this evening. And tell you, uh, next week we won't be at Rudy's. We'll have a show next uh, Wednesday, so stay tuned for that. Mentioned uh, homecoming on the Baylor campus. Uh, pigskin is going on beginning on Thursday. They'll uh, crown the queen and her court. And this year, I think for the first time ever, a king in his court uh, for homecoming at Baylor. That comes up on Thursday and uh, also the uh, bonfire and pepper alley is Friday evening that's on Fountain Mall always a big deal hope the weather cooperates uh, with that on Friday evening coach uh, Aranda will be there and uh, I think a, a special appearance by one Robert Griffin the third at the pepper alley on Friday evening as well so that'll be fun and then the parade the uh, largest and oldest uh, homecoming parade in the nation don't let anybody tell you anything different. Uh, comes up uh, bright and early on Saturday morning. Starts in downtown Waco at 8 o'clock. Should reach the Baylor campus at about 8.30 on Saturday morning. Uh, televised live on KCEN-TV, our great partners, and streaming on the Baylor Facebook page and on uh, the Baylor uh, website as well. Also, volleyball versus Kansas Thursday at 6 and Friday at 5. Soccer versus Texas Friday evening at 7 o'clock. And equestrian versus A&M on uh, Friday beginning at noon. Football versus Brigham Young Saturday at 2.30 at McLean Stadium. Hey, we appreciate you being with us tonight for the Baylor Coaches Show. We'll do it again next week. But for now, good night from Rudy's. This has been a presentation from Learfield.